Hello, this is Jane Goodall. First of all, I'd like to extend greetings to all of you who are viewing this event on this special Woman's Day, and also express my thanks to the Spanish National Cancer Research Centre and the UK Embassy in Spain. We're thinking today about women in science. You know, I've lived for almost 90 years on this planet, and I've seen such change in this field. There were very few female role models for girls in science when I was young. Madame Curie was the most famous and the only one we learned about at school. I think from the time I was born, I was fascinated by animals and their behavior. And I spent hours watching the birds, insects and squirrels in our garden in England. Fortunately, I had a super supportive mother. She took me for a holiday on a farm a proper farm, factory farms were unknown back then, and I was allowed to help collect the hen's eggs. I was curious. I asked everybody, where the, was the hole on the hen big enough for the egg to come out? Well, nobody told me. What I remember vividly is a hen going into one of the hen houses where they slept at night and where they laid their eggs. And I must have thought, ah, she's going to lay an egg. So I crawled after her. And big mistake, she flew out with squawks of fear. And in that little four-year-old mind, I must have decided no hen will lay an egg here. This is a frightening place. So I went into an empty hen house and waited. And apparently I waited for about four hours. Nobody knew where I was. They even called the police because it was getting to evening. And yet, although she must have been so worried, when my mother saw me rushing towards the house, uh, all with shining eyes, she sat down to hear the wonderful story of how a hen lays an egg. So I tell that story because that was the making of a little scientist, curiosity, asking questions, not getting the right answer, deciding to find out for myself, making a mistake, not giving up and learning patience. It was all there. And a different mother might have crushed that scientific curiosity and you know, how dare you go off without telling us, don't you dare do it again. But as it was, she supported me. It was when I was 10 years old that I decided and told everybody I'm going to grow up, go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. No thought of being a scientist. Girls weren't scientists like that in those days. Everybody laughed at me. How will you do that? Africa's far away. We don't know much about it. It's dangerous. And you're just a girl, not my mother. She said, if you really want to do something like this, then you must take advantage of every opportunity, work really hard. And if you don't give up, maybe you'll find a way. We couldn't afford university, but we had just enough for a secretarial course. And I got my diploma. It was very boring, but I got a job. And then came the opportunity, a school friend, invited me for a holiday to Kenya. I saved up money, actually working as a waitress because I got more money that way than secretarial, and finally had enough for a return fare to Africa. By boat, weren't planes back and forth in those days. That's how long I've lived. But anyway, um, after I'd stayed with my friend, I heard about the famous paleoanthropologist, Dr. Lewis Leakey. I went to see him, asking him if there was anything I could do to be with animals. And I think he was amazed about how much I knew about animals. I'd read everything I could, African animals, that is. And he needed a secretary. His secretary had suddenly left. So that boring secretarial course, wow, he gave me that job. And there I was, surrounded by people who could answer all my questions about animals in Africa, plants, insects, birds, everything. And he must have seen something in me because how amazing he offered me the opportunity to go and live with and learn from not just any animal, but the one most like us, the chimpanzee. He asked me if I would go to the Gombe National Park in Tanzania to study wild chimpanzees. Nobody had done this before. And I was lucky because being female was a big help. He felt that women might be better in the field 
that they might be more patient. And he was delighted I hadn't been to university. He said my mind would be uncluttered by the very reductionist thinking of scientists at that time about animal behavior. So it was, you know, tough. He got money for six months only because people said, what's this young girl straight out from England? And at first the chimpanzees ran away from me. But after about four months, one of them, David Greybeard, he's up here behind me, he began to lose his fear. And on a never to be forgotten day, I observed him using grass stems to fish termites from their underground nest, picking leafy twigs, stripping off the leaves so that he could use them as tools. This was breakthrough because back then, scientists thought that humans and only humans used and made tools. We were man the tool maker. That enabled Leakey to get money from the National Geographic Society so that I could continue the research. It just made all the difference in the world. And they also sent a filmmaker, Hugo van Lauwick, to document the behavior that I was now beginning to observe as the chimpanzees got finally more used to me. I think the most amazing thing was how like us they are. We didn't realize back then the extent of the biological similarity, but the behavior, each one an individual, I got to know their personalities, very complex social structure with male dominated, which was male dominated, females, long-term family bonds between mothers and their growing offspring that could last through life. Uh, they show hunting behavior, Sadly, they have an aggressive side, can be brutal and kill. They even have a kind of primitive war, but they also can be altruistic, as when an unrelated adult adopts a motherless infant and saves it life, saves its life. So all these things uh, were really exciting. And when I started talking about them and publishing, the other scientists mostly said, well, why should we believe her? She's just a girl. She hasn't even been to university. Oh, the Geographic gave her money just because she has nice legs and they can make her into a cover girl. Anyhow, Lewis Leakey decided I had to get a degree so that other scientists would take me more seriously. And he said, there's no time for an undergraduate degree. So he got me a PhD at Cambridge University the eighth student in their history to do a PhD without an undergraduate degree. So you can imagine I was really nervous. And think how I felt when I got there and these eminent scientists told me I'd done everything wrong. Chimp should have had numbers, not names. And I couldn't talk about their personality, their mind, their intelligence, or their, or their emotions, like happiness, sadness, fear, despair, those were unique to us, I was told. Nor should I have empathy with my subjects. I should be coldly objective. Well, I'd had a wonderful teacher as a child who taught me that that was all wrong. That was my dog, Rusty. You can't share your life in a meaningful way with a dog, a cat, a rat, a horse, a pig, I don't care, and not know that we are not the only beings on this planet with personality, mind, an emotion. So finally, when Hugo's film was shown, scientists just had to start changing the way they thought. And gradually, more and more scientists dropped this ridiculous idea that the difference between us humans and the rest of the animal kingdom was one of kind. We know it's merely degree. Eventually, I was accepted by the scientific community, started a research station. We're still carrying on with that study 60 years later. My best advice to young people today is that which my mother gave me. Work hard, take advantage of opportunity, and if you don't give up, you may find a way. Also remember, each one of us makes a difference every single day. And we get to choose what sort of difference we make. Federico and Rebecca 
we'll be talking about the difference that the Jane Goodall Institute Spain is making in Spain and in Africa. So my last word is don't forget that if you have a passion, if you have a dream, follow it, stick to it, and in the end, it should come true. Thank you.